Greetings everyone, McCartney Taylor here. Uh, I want to go over something really interesting today. Occasionally I uncover some really interesting beekeeping projects. This month I discovered a beekeeping group uh, out of Minnesota, I believe, that is called Bee Free Apiaries. It's a small group of people uh, led by a young and intrepid uh, woman named uh, Kaylin Kilty Lucas. And members of this group have traveled over to Ethiopia to train beekeepers on modern, appropriate beekeeping, uh, mainly using top bar hives. Now, the cool thing is, is they are boots on the ground getting things done. The bummer is that even though they have got a little bit of help from an NGO, they are footing most of the bill out of their own pocket. And I feel that we as beekeepers, who are not over in Tanzania or over in Ethiopia or over in Africa, that we should actually be helping support them. So, uh, you can see their progress reports on their website, uh, BeFreeApiaries.org. I'll put a link down below how to get there. And again, Bee Free Apiaries is training men and especially women on how to do beekeeping. And what does this mean to them as in Ethiopia is these hives, the traditional Ethiopian hive produces uh, X amount of honey. But if you bring in a top bar hive, you can produce 3X to up to 5X more honey. So that will really change the dynamic in these families and they can get out of a cycle of poverty and they can begin to afford some things. They can afford to send their kids to school. It's a really big thing these people are doing and I'm very much in favor of it. Um, they are boots on the ground making things happen over there. And I want to be part of this goodness, and I think that you might be, want to be part of this goodness as well. I'm going to donate to help them out, and I encourage my followers as well. Now, I've asked Kaylin to put together a little bit of a slideshow with a voiceover to show us what is actually going on over in Ethiopia and to explain a little bit about their mission over there. So, let's go see a little bit about Ethiopia. 250 kilometers southwest of Ethiopia's East Africa capital of Addis Ababa, acacia, banana, coffee, and avocado trees line the roadsides between Kambata Tambaro villages. The simple earth and eucalyptus stick homes resemble their traditionally built beehives, both of which have evolved little over the past 3,000 years. At 7,760 feet of altitude, in the lush tropical rolling valleys of Kambata Tambaro, Ethiopia, beekeepers build their beehives from woven bamboo, dried leaves, and earth. Measuring one and a half feet in width by three and a half feet long, they hang the cylinder baskets from neighboring trees or set them up on sticks close to their home. A mix of Apis melliferus guttuleta and gumbella bees pace propolis where they need to close off big gaps in their modest homes and they spend most days on the outside of their hives, aiding in the ventilation. The hives are given removable lids on each of their ends, which are pulled away when harvesting the honey panels. Of all the countries in the world, probably none has a longer tradition of beekeeping than Ethiopia. The country is ideally suited for apiculture because of its diverse ecology, with an estimated 10 million bees and 3,000 plus history of traditional honey and wax production. Apiculture provides direct income benefit to beekeepers, as well as other actors in the value chain. According to the Ethiopian Ministry of Agriculture, the nation on average produces more than 50,000 tons of honey and 3,500 tons of beeswax annually. Despite its great potential and contribution in improving the livelihood of subsistence farmers, much effort has not been made to its development. More than 90% of beekeepers in Ethiopia still employ ineffective traditional methodologies in hive construction and maintenance. This is significantly affecting both quantity and quality of the bee products. Furthermore, rural Ethiopian beekeepers lack exposure to apiary education and new proven beekeeping equipment. Health is a major challenge to Ethiopia's development. 
Half the population lacks access to basic health services. Health care delivery systems are weak, and the population is largely rural, spread across large regions that often lack roads. These facts, along with the country's susceptibility to droughts, epidemics, and regional conflicts, as well as traditionally low government spending on health care, especially affect the health of women and children. Peri-urban and rural populations within Kambata Timbaro almost exclusively rely on subsistence farming for their dietary intake. Families that own enough land also engage in farming on a larger scale and bring their higher yields to sell in local markets. More so, current food production rates in the area are often not able to sustain the population and residents are forced into spending their already nominal incomes on cheap yet less nutritional foods. Due to the physical demands of traditional beekeeping in Ethiopia and women's household responsibilities, apiculture work is traditionally practiced by men. Following our April 2013 assessments of two groups of beekeepers in the Kambata Tambaro district of southwest Ethiopia, we are confident that a transition from traditional woven bamboo beehives to locally resourced top bar hives will bring immediate benefits to the health and livelihood of the communities involved. In the village of Kololo, 43 beekeepers and 195 traditional hives were identified. All beekeepers are interested in receiving training on how to better work with their bee colonies, as well as change the infrastructures to better suit the needs of the bees. All but two attendees and identified beekeepers were male, and all are open to the diversification of adding more women into the sector. The introduction of top bar hives will allow for more women to take part in the practice, as well as generate a higher yield of product. By focusing on the inclusion of women into the field of beekeeping, we begin to tap into a previously marginalized group, therefore diversifying as well as balancing the labor sector. By providing women with a means of sustainable income, we can assure that the profits will be appropriately distributed according to individual family needs. Knowing that women more greatly provide for the overall well-being of the family unit, Educating them with the skills of beekeeping will directly affect the overall health of the family, both economically and socially. Through an effective implementation, Bee Freeze Beekeepers Education Program will improve the livelihoods of Kambata Timbaro beekeepers and farmers alike. Beekeepers will have greater access to salient resources and be more knowledgeable of effective beekeeping practices. Together, this will ensure a higher yield and more effective use of bee products as well as the increased pollination of local farmlands. In collaboration with the Haleda Bee Research Center, our training sessions will positively impact the livelihoods of all participants in the value chain. When beekeepers are empowered, the entire community benefits. Introducing locally resourced top bar hives will ensure stronger health of the colony and therefore productivity, which will exponentially affect the pollination rate of surrounding agriculture and therefore food production by up to 70%. Hence, the food grower, the beekeeper, as well as the community consuming the products will all positively benefit. By expanding the beekeeping sector towards women and incorporating their involvement, we can ensure that honey, wax, pollen, and propolis products, specifically focused on family nutrition and health, will reach the household level as well as provide income for a previously marginalized group. Please consider making a donation to Bee Freeze Beekeeper Education Programs in Kambata Timbaro, Ethiopia, and know that your support is making a life-changing difference. Oh, yeah.